Bruh. I need to get out with this. Let's check we get on. Right way. I go right way. Where's the cats going? I guess one of the things, so we get we get camp down the extra or we have to tell. Just like the fuck with the horse and the post effects, it looks weird. It's looking weirder than usual. Please don't want to remember.
I always get this punch, man. Yeah, I haven't played this game in almost, in almost two years. Almost two years. The last time I feel like putting some time on this game. Dash master, uh, not really. I'm doing the um, the letter for uh, Jaeger. I really forgot most of the stashes. I've been playing way too long.
Also, I, I never learned the statues for woods, to be honest. Can I sketch you? And I really don't want to fight anybody so late in the wipe with a packer. That's gonna be uh, bad news for me if I fight so much to fight any anybody, even the fucking scouts. I remember last time I played, I was trying to do this mission on night time. I have no night mission because I was a low level. And uh, the only enemy that I found on the whole raid was the the new bosses. I was like, that shit is fucking unlucky as fuck. Sniper. Found it like.
Right. This guy still said uh, shotguns. One, three, three, still okay. It's made so much different. How much does have they change? <laughs> It is weird to be back on Tarkov, to be honest. The game feels, feels really different. To dorms, which is gonna be bullshit. Then go back to construction up on the truck, and then get out. I mean, it's really trash to go through all those places.
Is people playing customs or no? The wooden times, the wooden times, the wooden times in this game. I would end up wooden times would have been better by now, all this time. Not too bad, not as bad as it used to be. It'd be like eight, ten minutes to get an array. Just waiting. Oh, nice. I'm gonna have to wait. We run out. Good 
Please don't kill me. One of the fucking scav. It sounds like it. I can't even see it. That worked out better than what I thought it was gonna go like. I need a key for this. And I will have the key.
of these for a quest, at least two. At least two. I believe it's for a... I have to drop in the woods, I have to like way later on. Way later. I know this because I need a key for that. Because it's annoying. This kind of ration packs. Uh, I could go to interchange and see if we can get some food from there. Holy shit, okay. People camping fucking American. It sounds like it.
Are they? Why are you scare me like that? I can hear people dying outside. I'm all the way here. But the audio is still trash. The question is, how, where do we get out from here? We got all the extracts. Uh, 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 uh. can go away. Yeah, there's people camping in Emmerkan, that is for sure. Well, it was, um, fire, maybe? Not so sure. I say we risk it for the biscuit and we get our American since it's the closest. A boy shack. That is probably a player. I mean, two things can happen now. Oh, we die right here on this corner. There's somebody camping. I wouldn't be surprised about that.
Oh wow. None of these missions are fun to do. Alright, I guess I'm really tired from work and also I was late today. So actually I'm gonna go to the stream there. So blue, how's it going man? Yes sir. I was late today to the stream because I got out from work at six, exactly. That's, I'm really like really tired. I'm doing good, just tired from work. How about you? I mean, you just got here, so no. I'm not leaving you yet. Here from school. Oh, how was it? Uh, give me a second, guys. I'm receiving a call right here. I'll be right back.
for spoken. I'm sorry for that, guys. I'm sorry for that. Blue, really, really sorry. So, Blue, how's your day been? How was school? Where, where have you been up to? Let's watch this. I, I, I cannot get bored of watching reviews for this game. Like, after playing all of it, I'm more than needed. Like, for spoken is one of the most embarrassing Let me know if the games is good. I've ever had the displeasure of playing. I don't remember the last time I played a game that was so hopelessly out of touch with what makes a game fun and enjoyable, and I played through all of it so that you don't have to. So why is this game so bad? I'm sure I'm not the first person to break the news to you that Forspoken really isn't the greatest game of our generation, but maybe you're like, come on, Chop, maybe it's not your thing, but is it really that bad? I don't like that. You absolutely sound like that. I don't know, you absolutely sound like that. Yeah, see? Two can play at that game. Uh... I would say it is. Honestly, it's worse than I was expecting, to be quite honest. So let me tell you a little story first and set the stage why I even played this to begin with. So the other day, I found myself at a GameStop, and I was just browsing around when I saw a copy of Forspoken for PlayStation 5. I heard a bunch of feedback on the internet about the game already, you know, like the, the, the horrible dialogue, the clunky gameplay, the, you know, performance Wait issues a minute. on PC, the story, etc. Like, all the things, and the... Who is it goes to GameStop? Like, I like the store for what it is, 
but I haven't been there in a long as time. Probably maybe like half a year or something like that. I haven't been there in a very long time. And and it's pretty sad because that that's, uh, that company's going down hill badly. A long day, yeah, I bet. Did you like you have work and then school or just school day? The classes back to back. Uh, I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> I really don't miss school, not even a little bit. Like it's not like I hated school or like I neither was bad. I didn't have, never had like bad grades, but I don't know. Always, most of the classes will be boring, extremely boring, unless it was math or physics or something like that. Hmm, your yeah, brother life. Delivery life. I wouldn't be able to do that. I will fall asleep. Like I have, I'd rather go home and do my stuff at home. Or somewhere else than the library. That's just me's preference. The fact that despite all of that, the game still cost 70 whole dollars was absolutely criminal. But then I was like, wait a minute, I, I need to be more careful about making snap judgments on games that I've never played before. So, you know, instead of treating somebody and myself to a nice meal or going to see a movie or hell, literally anything else you can do with $70, I decided <laughs> oh to God. play Forspoken by myself. Well, that wasn't much fun. And it was at this GameStop that my fate was sealed. As I went to buy the game, the girl running the counter was low-key hinting that people weren't really liking this game and that I should possibly <laughs> reconsider my choice. But you know what? I stuck to my guns oh and I my decided God, it's so I was doing up. this for the good of the people. And I began to play the video game back at home. I realized I was in for a ride. A boring and embarrassing ride. Just move shit with my freaking mind! Fellas. <laughs> Yeah, okay, this that is, is something real dialogue. I, I do magic, talk in a cups, real life jump video you know game. I'll probably fly next. Now you're just being ridiculous. I'm excited to introduce the wonderful Ella Belinska who's joining us today. Now, the thing is, I really feel like I did my best to cleanse oh, my that? mental palate and go in with very no awkward. negative judgments beforehand. I just wanted to experience it for what it is and let the game do the talking. And uh, it, it did talk, I guess. Oh, hello. Yes. So oh, perhaps you're smarter than you look. No. Yes. N no. Yes. But one of the absolute worst things about this game is its main character. But before I say anything about her, I want to make super clear that her actual actress did a pretty good job with the material that she was given. Ella Belinska had nothing to do with the actual direction of the story or her character's attitude. She did a fine job with what she had to portray. Oh, and it seems cool. like she just genuinely wanted to give a good performance at something, but this material, Man, cool I, I don't think just... anybody could make I would like it to go sound there. good. <laughs> Yeah, so the whole time. Come on, man. Come boosh, on now. Boosh, boosh. <laughs> yes, boosh. I need a boosh back home. And this is a kudos to like the writers and the producers of the of the project. Okay, fine. I'll just tell your boss, Mr. Chicken Giggin. 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 All right. Gig, gig, quick, gig, giggin. Quick, gig. Um, <laughs> but uh. So it's important to detach the actual person from her character. In fact, it seems like Ella was kind of aware of and was cringing at how much Frey really swears throughout the game. She swears more times. <laughs> I think there's someone needs to, at some point, figure out how many times she swears in the video game. <laughs> but it's like the writers that of this true. game gave themselves a much. challenge for them to write yeah, the it's most very unlikable protagonist possible. They and do? it's way more complicated I mean, than I've just never been the, the anti-hero trope so I don't not know. really working. After sitting through a grueling 13 hours of this garbage, I have enough of a grip on the characters and story to draw a conclusion. But okay, you might say, sure, Forspoken has terrible and cringe writing and dialogue, uh, but you know, what if the game is fun and, and maybe the game play holds up so it doesn't really matter you know right the gameplay of Forspoken is just as out of touch and off base as the rest of the story it's like they looked at god of war and elden ring and were like let's just make that but a, a lot more terrible they tried so hard to recreate the gameplay loop of those games and why they're actually fun without understanding any of the principles that make those games work and because i gave myself only one day to beat the game i forced myself to shuffle all the main content down so fast i started to wonder at a certain point if i even still liked video games anymore 
anymore. Forspoken made me question my entire career and hobby. I'm exaggerating a bit, of course, but the fact that the game nearly put me to sleep is not a joke. That combined with the laughable, shallow, and one-dimensional story, this was probably one of the biggest chores of my life to get through as far as video games go. Okay. Okay, that, that's not a good look for this guy, but... um. Uh, this game was made on the same engine that they did Final Fantasy XV. It's the only open world game they have, like, you know, newer open world game they have in Final Fantasy. And I downloaded on my computer the, the demo. I didn't buy the game because I know it's, it's not good. And it looks like the textures and how the game feels and the combat is almost the same. How how it feels at least, it feels very similar, and the open world is like empty, like there's no people, there is no enemies, there is nothing. It's really empty. And that game came out in 2016, and it still looks like not too far from this game that just came out this year, and that's crazy. Like six years, no more than, what is that? Seven years. And they, they use the same engine. They use the pretty much. Probably the same uh, textures and whatnot, and it looks almost the same. Yeah, the only thing that looks different is just like the magic and stuff looks better on this one because it's a newer game. But besides, that, it doesn't look at, like too much of a difference. And also, Square Enix closed that uh, department for Luminous. That's what they would, that uh, developers were called Luminous. They they use Luminous Engine, and they closed it down after like I think it was last week or something. Because they fucked up big time with two games in a row. But it's a good lesson on Which how not to make a game like this going forward. The two main components that I really want to discuss are the actual story and then the gameplay systems and structure. After giving it about two whole seconds of thought, it's pretty clear why really most of it doesn't work. In all fairness, it does have some potential in a few areas, and it has some neat gameplay systems that were actually kind of fun here and there, but those small gems that you're going to encounter, they do not even come close to compensating for all the boring garbage you have to endure to get to those parts. The game is suck, and probably the biggest reason for that is the terrible story. And just a heads up, there will be story spoilers for Forspoken, but who who cares? It's not like the studio is going to make a sequel to Forspoken or anything because I mean, of the Yeah, Square Enix said bye-bye. They they went from oh, Forspoken to is. Fork. Uh, Square Enix said There is an update from Luminous Production. You may have heard the news that Luminous Production is merging with Square Enix beginning on May 1st. Our talented team will join Square Enix to deliver new, innovative gaming experiences to play across the globe. Between now and then, we remain entirely focused on Force Poke. We are currently working on the previously announced patch to address overall game performance. We will deliver an update soon and the DLC, in Tanta we trust, is on track to, for release this summer. Thank you again for your patience and support. We, when we established Luminous Productions in 2018, our vision was to make AAA games that use technology and artistry to deliver completely new play experiences. Having the chance to do just that has been a dream come true. Uh, no. <laughs> That's definitely not what happened. Yes, it did. When I saw the first, the first trailer, it was like beginning last year. Uh, yeah, beginning last year, and I'm pretty sure they did that trailer on Unreal 5 or 4, because they said they were using that engine to do this game, Unreal, Unreal Engine, but then that using Luminous Engine, which is the one they did Final Fantasy 15, and it looked amazing, it looked so good, and then a few months after they did the... Uh, I don't know, YouTubers, influencers, whatever demo, and then they get they did a public demo, and the game looked nothing like they first showed up. It was it was crazy? And to be honest, like, yeah, the story is trash. But me personally, I don't play games for the story. Like, like it's nice yeah, to have a story, but at the end of the day, like, I'm not there for the story of the game. I'm there for the gameplay. And sadly, the gameplay on first book is just, it's a hit or miss. Like, sometimes it feels good, sometimes it's just like, eh, this is more the same, it's whatever. Like, the enemies, they're very repetitive. 
they don't they don't show any like challenge at all like they because if you go to find the difficulty to difficulty the only thing they do is they do a little bit more damage and they take way more damage to freaking kill them and that's it they only have two or three attacks max and this is i don't know it's dumb and bye bye it gets boring they, pretty they fast they went from four spoken to four closed Okay, so let me try to explain the story as clearly as possible without boring you to absolute tears. So the game opens up with a girl named Frey living in New York City who's been without her parents her whole life and is somewhat of a troublemaker to survive. She gets into some real trouble when a judge lady shows some mercy for her and lets her off easy. Then Frey gets into a potentially deadly scuffle with some other people in the city. And this is the scene right here where I could feel something was off. This is like the game has no idea how it wants to come across. Like we don't know if this alleyway scene is supposed to be like like she's cracking jokes the whole time we don't know if it's supposed to be like funny or or dramatic or or scary or serious like it, it's not clear yeah at all. it's not this is it's, when it's I nice to have a, a little bit wrong a but story, basically like, you, know, you know this ends up she escapes and like, she goes back to her apartment and she's say, like oh my god we have the investor sometime on it like for some you've been go to war and you know you're a great god like kill a bunch of guys beforehand and now he has a kid and he has to raise him and his wife died and you know all this story from God of War, the first one, and then, you know, all this story from God of War, right now, they have, they have like a nice story, like, it complements the gameplay, and the gameplay is, like, fantastic, it's super crazy, it's super good, it's, it feels, it feels good to play the game, and the same thing with Elden Ring, like, even though Elden Ring, they tell the story through NPCs, and sometimes even items, and random stuff on the, on the wall, it's like, you know, and it's, in, it's an interesting story. Of course, like, Elden Ring doesn't emphasize on the story as much because that's, it's part of the world, but not like, they don't present it like in a silver plate to you. But the gameplay is, is it feels good. Even though it's slower, it's like more, it could even feel like more clunky, but it makes sense. And this one is just like, it feels like whatever. The scene when she's getting jumped on the alley. Like, I didn't mind this scene. I just mind was the, the boys acting and how they played. This was like, like, okay, she's being gone point by like five people. She jumps on this balcony, ladder, whatever thing, whatever it's called. And then, they, like, two, two or three of them has guns in their hands. And nobody's taking a shower. She's like taking forever to go to the side of the fence. And then, it's like, the fence is not a freaking wall. They can see. Shoot through that freaking fence and like what the fuck is going on here have to move out of this uh, nightmare city so her plan is to move herself and her cat homer out of new york city the following day and then coincidentally the night before she leaves those gang members choose that night to burn down her apartment and then she's like this sucks and then she sees a pretty bracelet in this window and then she puts the bracelet on and goes to a new world and it turns out that br that bracelet is a british man oh hello yes so oh, perhaps you're smarter than you look so then frey and her british jewelry have a bunch of dialogue of them getting to know each other and then in this new land full of monsters they find a castle with actual people in it and they arrest her in this really awkward cutscene we're saved so, uh, lads, I just, uh, I just want you all to know, I did not edit this, uh, cutscene at all. This is, um, this is how it plays out in the game. So she's like, yo, hey, there's, huh? you know, people here. She's in good spirits, and then some noise happens, and then it's like, hmm, you know, what's going on? And then, oh, she's arrested. Okay, anyways. Then some stuff we don't really care about happens. Uh, she gets arrested, and some girl named Auden helps her escape, and all this time, Frey is consistently acting selfish towards the people trying to help her, and trying to out-trauma them. I actually don't have the willpower, nor do I care enough about the story to go detail by detail, but... The other thing too, on these freaking cutscenes, it was the fade out fading and like, bro... It's so annoying, like, what they, why they cannot do a whole ass scene without all those... Weird cuts, and just change the camera angle then. It's better. But not they fade out, fading on the person's... Uh, not the person's face. They fade out, they're fading on the... On the main character's face they fit out they fit in that now she's like out of the tower it's like so weird so like it doesn't 
the pace is weird. Every cutscene is like doesn't make sense. What they're talking is like terrible, terrible, terrible. But essentially, Frey, with the powers from her British jewelry, tried to save some guy who turns out to be Auden's father, who can help her return back to New York City from a weird fog called the Break that turns people into zombies or just kind of act like one. I I don't really know. Anyways, then some more boring stuff happens, and then with the help from some her more friends at Paul, she finds out there's like these four lady gods named Tantas that once protected the area, and this is what I guess was the cause of the corruption in the break. So Frey's job is to go eliminate them and then clear the break fog away. She learns more about the Tantas and what they did in the past and what their strengths are and so on. And the main portion of the game is you going to these open world areas and then the main boss is being one of the Tantas that we learned about. There's like three or four of them. Uh, I mean, technically there's four, but the fourth one is the twist of the story. So I'm going to fast forward through a lot of stuff here. You know, we're just going to we're just gonna keep skipping a little, little more. Uh, uh, Frey figures out that one of the Tantas is actually her mother and that she is basically kind of a god as well and then the british bracelet is the bad guy all along and he is the reason that the tantas were corrupted and did bad things so after defeating the british man in battle they're like oh okay we need to turn him into a bracelet because he's like corrupted all of us and then we're gonna slowly start to lose our minds and go crazy so that we should all split up to different areas of the world so that we don't drive each other really really crazy and do awful things and so this means that Frey's mother then to uh, to avoid this corruption threw Frey into New York City because one time she visited New York and thought it was epic and then she was like hey we should turn our city like New York you know it's definitely not like filthy or disgusting or has a super high crime or anything no no new york's amazing so we should make our i'm not kidding about this so we should make our city like new york because it's like a bastion of hope but then the ghost of Frey's mother is like okay we need to go defeat man once and for all and after defeating the british man we can start to make sapal like new york city and that is going to be Frey's job she's not going back to new york even though she spent the whole game trying to do that uh because her cat really cares about her i think although it seems to be doing just fine without her no she's gonna stay after defeating the british and then makes a paul like new york city and that's where the game ends I really don't have much else to add about this storyline of the characters. Like, it's the most generic, boring, and unlikable set of, of people I've, I think I've ever seen in a video game. But the thing is, there was a moment in this story where it actually could have gripped me. There was there was a, a fork in the road where it could have gone in a very interesting direction. I thought it was possible that at some point, they were going to make it so that the world that she was in, this, this, like, fantasy world, was basically just psychologically representing what she was facing in the real world. But no, they didn't go there. This is just... Just a literal place uh, she is a literal god and everything about the game was literal she just left everything including her cat and her friends behind in New York City or whatever and nothing really mattered so anyways that's yeah that's the story can we just not talk fine. yes fine by me suit yourself I'd love a bit of silence it is so enough of the story, let's move on to Forspoken's gameplay, which, you know, a lot of people will play a game, it, even if it has a bad story, like if the gameplay's fun, that kind of makes up for it. Unfortunately, Forspoken's gameplay is kind of just as embarrassing as the story. However, in the gameplay, there are a few little gems here and there that are actually kind of fun. So what I said earlier in the video where Forspoken is essentially a God of War and Elden Ring wannabe hybrid, I, I mean that literally. So it basically, the core gameplay loop and the combat is is essentially you know using different weapons i.e god of war style you have different abilities on them and you can upgrade those abilities through a skill tree and so on the difference is in forspoken you end up getting like four or five different sets of these spells which you know they're they come with varying degrees of fun some of them are actually kind of cool to use and some of them are just very very boring but it's the same idea as God of War, where you have these different elemental types, and in this case, they're spells, and they do and have certain effects on different kinds of enemies. And so, theoretically, there's some, you know, intricacies woven into this combat. And you can, like, flip between spells very rapidly, and it's, like, pretty intuitive in that way. It's like God of War, Elden Ring, and Final Fantasy all kind of baked into one game. And you would think that would work re really well, and it does for the most part, especially in boss fights. I actually think the combat is great, and that's 
that's the most entertaining part of the game. There's three or four different battles where I'm like, oh, I kind of actually, they, they nailed the gameplay loop here. I get what this is all about. But the rest of it is scuffed Elden Ring or scuffed God of War. For Elden Ring's case, it's like a lot of the, you know, core combat is like in healing, for example, instead of your flask of crimson tears, you have these healing droughts. Instead of grace, you have these like refuge camps that you can rest at or whatever. It's just like yeah, that's, the same yeah, idea, they're, just done. They're meant to be separate games. Um, I, I don't think, like, I I I don't agree with the is uh, Elden Ring God of War mixed up together. It feels more like Final Fantasy meets an MMO kind of magic meets single player game kind of stuff. That's that's what I feel like it, it is. And uh, they didn't know how to implement it properly outside of the boss fights. Some of the boss fights are cool. They're decent, at least. But be, be, out, out of the boss fights, like, any, any other fight you have on the open world, they doesn't make sense. Like, there is no difficulty to it. There is no, like, preparation. Like, the only thing you have to remember is that some, some enemies are weaker to other elements, and that's it. And most of the attacks are boring. It's like for the very flashy ones that are, like, the thunder ones are pretty cool. And the fire ones are pretty cool too. But like the first magic you have, which is like the rock and whatnot, like that's her own magic. That's just boring as shit. It's boring. You think that it gets annoying uh, to a point. And there's a part like you're gonna spend pretty much the first half of the game, or almost the first half of the game, just with that kind of magic only. And then that's annoying. It gets frustrating because the text is like makes your finger hurt at some point. But once you get the fire magic and the thunder magic, it, it's pretty cool. And it, it, it looks cool. But besides that, there's, there's nothing much to it. Also, with the crafting and the, the gear stuff, like the cloaks and the necklaces, like it doesn't really matter what you use. Like it doesn't matter. Because all of them, you can max them out. All of them. There is no one, there is no one that is only specific, specific for this, or this one can only do defense and purple magic, or and this one can do only uh, red magic and, and blue magic. No. You can, if you have the skills that you need to, to um, upgrade these this, uh, cloaks and necklaces, you can max them all out. All the way to the max uh, points it can have, which is, it makes no sense. Like, why would you not go out of the way to get a different cloak or necklace if you can just keep the one you have and then just upgrade it? Like when I was, before I fought the last uh, Tanta, I had this cloak and this necklace that I was almost maxed out. And keep in mind, I only played this game for like 24 hours total. And the story only took me 13 hours. Or 12 hours, actually. And um, I was like, why am I finding stuff that is on the area where it's supposed to be late game? And it's worse than what I have right now. And I've been having this cloak and this necklace since almost the beginning of the game. It, it makes no sense to go out of, the, out of your way and find other stuff a lot more sloppy and clunky. And what I meant earlier about this game just not really understanding the principles that make a God of War or Elden Ring work is really how the combat feels. The problem is the, like, dodge mechanic or your mobility, It the game practically, I'm not kidding, If, you, if those of you who played it know what I'm talking about, the game practically plays itself. It is very, very, extremely easy to dodge moves. You just pretty much need to be mashing buttons the whole time, and you're gonna get, like, an plus in combat the game just wants you to pretty much press buttons as fast as humanly possible without really thinking so much about what you're doing and it's like the difficulty that's supposed to be baked within the game is not because the enemies themselves have interesting mechanics and you know they really need to be learned and all this kind of stuff it's that they are just giant giant bullet sponges they have absurd amounts of health and it's not that the fight is hard it's just that most of the fights are like an endurance test or unbelievable 
unbelievably tedious. That is like where the difficulty comes in. But yep. the difficulty is not just, you know, spamming the same button until you wear away at a health bar eventually. It's so unengaging and uninteresting. Now, I've been pretty hard on the gameplay so far, but let me actually mention something I do really like in this game. Uh, and like I mentioned, some of the spells and their upgrade trees and the way that you, like, actually acquire brand new upgrades is really smart. You have to, like, sort of pick and choose which ones you want to go for. And depending on your play style, you can really cultivate this to your own personal taste and everything. And then also... There's this extra system within the game where Frey can paint her nails a certain pattern, and this will boost your magic of one particular kind or another. Like, you can make one of the colors that, of your... I forgot about that. So, the nails, they have set skills. You cannot change them, you cannot upgrade them. They have set skills. Why is it it's only the nails? Why didn't do the same thing with the cloak and the necklace? Like, this cloak, you can only upgrade it until level 20. Or something like that and then these skills are there forever like if you want all different skills you have to go get out the cloak and out the necklace right like they did with the nails like all the nails they all have uh, set they have two skills each or perks or whatever so they have set perks you cannot change them you cannot upgrade them they're there that's it you find the nails and what they offer that's what you're gonna get why didn't do the same thing with the cloaks and the, and the, and the necklaces? It would have made so much more sense to go out of the way and clear dungeons for, for necklaces and, and cloaks. Like, it's just dumb. Like, the only positive thing about going out of your way and getting the cloaks and necklaces is because sometimes they have perks that you haven't unlocked yet. And once you acquire these cloaks or necklaces those perks are unlocked for you to apply them to any other cloak you have and necklace but i would have rather have a set pair of perks on the necklaces and cloaks and you cannot ever change them just like with the nails i don't know why they did it different with like a half another year like it's just it makes no sense dumb spells more powerful uh depending on which nails that you have on and stuff like that it's kind of it's something different i've never really seen that before that is fairly interesting but speaking of elden ring when it comes to the open world this is again where forespoken is so just like unbelievably out of touch the open world here is so dry and and lifeless and dead and they even get the dungeon crawling wrong i'm not even saying elden ring is perfect in this regard but they really get it wrong here the dungeons are just like wave after wave going into room after room of of different enemies bullet sponges etc like you kind of just have to chore through the combat to get some kind of reward and it's like it doesn't feel satisfying in the way that an Elden Ring dungeon does there's no like really puzzles or anything you got to solve it's just like it's very just run-of-the-mill it's do this thing we're trying you know what we're copying we're just not doing it quite as well and all of the other side quest systems I'm gonna be totally honest I couldn't even be bothered to really engage with them in my playthrough I was basically just beelining all the main story stuff because I wanted to finish it in a day and so I can't speak on everything this the side quests have to offer but i'm gonna wager that they're probably not very fun because all of the most entertaining stuff in the game like i said is those boss fights those are the highlights and even then i wouldn't say they were like groundbreaking or crazy i didn't have like an insane time with them. they were they were very entertaining they were mildly yeah, they, fun they, but they, were they weren't like groundbreaking that, so i'm gonna it. assume that any of the side quest stuff is not gonna somehow transcend how enjoyable the mainline quest stuff is and it's like that would be less now that that is a question, does Forspoken even has side quests? I have no idea. Let's see here, give me a rant for every detour. That's what they're called. No, I don't know what they say on my page. Uh, the, okay, the Calicos, which is the winged, the winged cats. That looks funny. We got a tour. 
Okay, if you're in the sheep, chasing da, 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 new perspective, chasing gray cat, la la la. Dancing music ball, spider spacked, helping the broken. This this skin doesn't even have actual side missions. This is just crab, literally. I have I have spent money in a stupid shape loop, <laughs> but this game takes the crown on this stuff is and the stupidest stuff I ever bought. <laughs> of a problem and i would potentially even be more incentivized to do side quest stuff if the core combat wasn't so unbelievably boring i'm just sitting here and thinking about it and especially when it comes to gameplay forspoken has literally nothing to offer that something else doesn't already do better there is nothing unique that you can find in forspoken that when you bought the game <laughs> you bought the game <laughs> Oh man, no. <laughs> oh, that's bad. I thought you were making fun of it when you were on my stream. You never said you had it. I thought you were making fun when you were coming on my stream. <laughs> oh my god. You cannot find another game doing something slightly better. The fact that Forspoken and God of War are the exact same price tag is actually a crime scene. Like, I was gonna make a joke that Forspoken is, is the poor man's God of War or Elden Ring, but I was like, wait a minute, it's not even the poor man's because they're the same price. I do think a lot of what hurt the core gameplay, besides the stuff that works, a lot of the stuff that doesn't work, I think is unfortunately hindered just by the overall direction of the game. Like, there's not much you can do that's super interesting given the story material they had. This is very apparent in the game's enemies. They are just like, I don't know, if you wanted to just type the word monster into Google, the most generic one you could find, that's basically every enemy in uh, Forspoken. It's some kind of like animal looking thing or a zombie, and then you put like yellow goo on them, and then you call that corrupted or the break did it or whatever and then that's that that's your enemies like that's as creative as the enemy variety in the game gets and even mechanically there isn't much else to say about them they have roughly the same attacks they might throw a thing at you or they might charge at you it's like all right you know we've we've been through this before how you go about dealing with them with your different spells that can be kind of interesting that's kind of where the game shines but the the boss variety besides the actual main fights is uh it's really not there and it's just kind of got me confused because Forspoken, in all fairness, has a lot of really neat ideas. And some of them yeah, are executed kind of well. Some of them are definitely not. And everything from its story to its actual core gameplay has a lot of missed opportunities and just, you know, bad decisions. But I have to wonder, like, who is this game actually made for, you know? Like, maybe, it, I, I don't know if their intention was to go after the audience of people that enjoy God of War or Elden Ring kind of style games. Or I generally... I genuinely am not sure. It's no. like not really a, an IP that's related to anything, so it's not like they have this pre-established audience that they can already pull from. This didn't really do a great job at developing any new audience because the story is bad and embarrassing. And the gameplay, it for sure has some highlights. The boss fights are, you know, pretty entertaining. I, I'm not gonna lie, but outside of that stuff, the the core gameplay is so like vapid and it just gets laughed at and it's just it's super like just generic feeling I, I don't know really what went wrong here the writers of the game themselves apparently have admitted that this did not turn out how they planned and if that's the case I would also assume that is the same sentiment that the gameplay uh developers probably feel it's like oh maybe this didn't feel the way we we intended while I was being kind of dramatic earlier like it's it's definitely not the worst video game I've ever played but with all of the potential that I think this had, it's such a shame that all of this was just such a wasted opportunity. I could yep. put aside a lot of the, you know, really horrible dialogue and just, like, really cringe writing. And the gameplay, even if it's not the most fun thing I've ever played, if it was unique or something special, or I feel like I haven't experienced it, I would be far more okay with it. But the fact that it doesn't do any of those things, it, it has, like, probably one of the most uninteresting stories you'll ever encounter, and this game has a $70 price 
price tag when you could spend that 70 bucks like i said literally anywhere else or on a game that actually does these intended features but far more efficient and and superior just spend your money on those i cannot honestly say that anybody should spend their money on forspoken I think you already know that, but I wanted to give this one a look because it truly isn't it, and it actually baffled me about how bad it actually was, so I felt somewhat obligated to make a video as I spent an entire day of my life, you know, trudging through all of this main quest nonsense and beating the game, so this is my take on it. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Ah, it's rough, man. This game is too rough. Okay, now that you guys... Uh... In any game, there are traps. Hi there, okay. travel. Chill, 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 chill with that. Um, what is it? Here, this this is a demo for Final Fantasy 15. This game was made in the same engine as Pro Pokemon was made. I'm gonna show you what what it looks like. It's, for me, it looks almost the same. Which it doesn't make sense because this game was made on or released on 2016, seven years ago. That's more than half a decade, almost a decade ago. And it's as empty and... At least Final Fantasy has a better story. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, like every single person that they came to the child was uh, oh. playing. Uh, how the fuck did I run? I forgot already. Ortisiano. Like for me, it looks just as first broken looks like. Just of course, it's gonna look a little bit better than your game, but it's not much difference different from it. Just pretty messed up for how old this game is. Yeah, it does. Let's see if we can go... Uh... What, like what, what fucks me up is the uh, character models in this game look better than. Um. Shikarida, nanka sugo yanshin. More spoken. Ah, shigai ga haitte kure shinpai ga nai karna. Mina, nisei ko. Ego. Let's put this on daytime. Doctor, go nai no ga. すむか。相変わらずスタイリッシュだな。別に普通だが。Okay. Like, look at this place. This is uh, the beginning area, at least for the demo. I don't know for the main game. There is not a single soul to be seen. 
no people, no cars, no... Okay, there's two cars coming in there. And you know what's worse? Like, the cars don't even make sounds. You hear that? No sound. I have to be, like, right next to it. No noise. Like, I can run for a while here. And I, and I will not find another single enemy. That's messed up. Now, if you look at the animation of this guy uh, swinging his sword, it looks almost as this gear uses the flame sword. Almost the same. Looks very like. And like what these people do with the with all the mechanics, like just like copy and paste and whatnot. So it's it's really weird, really really weird. And to me, I had hopes. Yeah. Yeah, for real. ゲンが鳴るぜ。絶対知れる時は一人だ。ちいちゃん、水差すんじゃねえ。練習練習。練習練習。練習練習。練習練習。To a point, this game feels even better. To actually fight enemies. So it's just... Like, I don't know, it just feels weird to play first Pokemon at this point. Like, it literally, it looks almost the same. So obviously, like I've been saying, it's gonna look a little bit better because it's a newer game. Implementing other graphics and better at... Uh, better textures. But even these textures look almost as the ones in Forspoken. And it looks as empty as Forspoken. There's no enemies nowhere. There's no people nowhere. There's no NPCs. It's weird. A very empty game. Like the nah, demo nah, has nah. a few uh, nah. side missions that you go in a, uh, to hunt some of these uh, monsters or, be or beasts or whatever they're, they're called. But there are as scarce or if, or more than for Pokemon. Oh yeah. Buji dana. Hi hi. Exo. It's a really weird feeling to play this game and, and for Pokemon, and then like you know you realize that okay they're made in the same engine. Uh, the rocks looks the same, the ground looks the same, the grass looks almost the same, the emptiness definitely the same. So, yeah. Sadly for you and me, Blue, like, we bought the game on good faith, <laughs> right?
Because I, I was hoping the game was gonna be good. Like, it looked really good. Like, the mechanics of the combat, you know, before it was released. It looked interesting. But, um... Like, somebody will ask me, like, oh, we recommend to play for Spoken? Hell no. N not even if you get it for 10 bucks. Just not play it. That's me after almost three hours in that game. And that's it in two in first book and that that's something I don't like for many different games that are open world. How they and they fucking hold your hand all the time and like the map shows everything everywhere like there is no sense of exploration there is no there's no reward for exploration like you go open the map and you can see everything everywhere and this that's <laughs> そうかも。自然界とは空か食われるか。だからな。ちょっと不言。いや、ベレドだ。でんです。ゲリンだ。I And uh, the picture said, like, uh, no game deserves this much hate. And when I'm like, well, I don't like people who actually hate the game just because they want to hate it. The game is really bad. Just, just that. The game is really, really bad. The story is bad. The gameplay is bad. The uh, mechanics are like, whatever. Pretty much like there is no sense of, like like you don't, you don't get rewarded for fighting enemies you don't get rewarded for exploring or for crafting anything like it's just like literally uh, whatever game you can hold it all the time and that's it like turn up your brain and that's it レンゲ成功。さあ。ドクター。イギリス。調子いいじゃねえか。グラディオ。外すなよ。うまいこと言ったな。お互いにな。よ。あ。
more than just playing games. Yeah. 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 And sell that to be honest, it's not a hard game at all. It's a really easy game for the most part. But sell that on the show doesn't show you where everything is at. Doesn't show you where all the I don't know um what you call it chests or like hidden stuff is at. Doesn't show you where where to find certain stuff. Like you have to, you know, play the game and learn all this stuff, and that's good, cause you know, it makes you feel like your time is worth um, learning the game and learning the mechanics and learning where to find certain stuff that you might need to fight certain bosses that you're having a hard time with. Like it's uh, it's worth playing the game and exploring and learning all these new mechanics and whatnot. But um. On uh, what's it called? And for smoking, it's not like you're playing, paying big money just to turn off your brain, and that's it. Just doesn't make sense. Uh, all right, guys. So that definitely is gonna be it. Blue, thank you for stopping by. Um, are you wearing here on Saturday? By the way, now that I remember, I can see you here on Saturday. Uh, hope you have a good night. Hope you get rest, have fun, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys on Thursday again, like, oh, the usual, trying to, you know, be consistent on this, uh, Thursday 6pm, also, uh, don't forget to follow my Twitch, I've been thinking of streaming on Twitch as well, if you guys like that platform, I think it's, it's a little better platform for, sh for streaming overall. It's just it's really hard to get notice. Like I have way more people coming to chat and stream on YouTube than I ever had on Twitch for streaming for a few months. And well, I'll see you guys next time. Hope you have a good night. Blue. Thank you for stopping by like always. Hope you're doing well and you keep on doing well. And have a beautiful night. I'll see you guys next time.